Hey folks, it's Chris and the Food Peddlers here. I'm just in our uh, shipping container greenhouse. And what I want to talk to you about right now is airflow in, uh, in your growing system. So I'm going to talk about what we do here to keep air flowing. And hopefully you can take some principles from that that are going to apply to your situation. Everybody's um, growing situation is going to be different no matter how similar they are. So uh, you need to find a way that's going to work for your system. So I'll talk about what we're doing here. Uh, and hopefully you can draw from that. I guess to start out with, the first thing to understand is airflow is really important for two major aspects of growing. Number one is disease control. So as you can see here, we've got a lot of trays really densely packed growing together. And this isn't even a full greenhouse right now. So as you know, probably from growing vegetables outside, um, the more uh, densely planted you are, the higher your disease risk. Why is that? you got lower airflow, and usually what you're risking there is fungal disease. Obviously humidity and soil moisture play a role in that, but uh, in those conditions, high humidity, high soil moisture, but with good airflow, your disease risk is going to be significantly reduced. The other um, thing you want to consider with airflow is microclimates. And even in a microclimate, there's microclimates. So a microgreens microclimate <laughs> um, exists in this area just above the crop here. And so what's happening is you've got gas exchange here. You, you, as you know, you're, um, I keep saying that, but I don't know that you know this, so if you don't know this, um, plants take in CO2 and they release oxygen. We take in that oxygen and release CO2, and we've got a nice symbiotic relationship. There's biology, plant biology 101 summarized. So what happens often if there's stagnant air you get a pocket here of maybe excess oxygen because the plant's taken in a lot of the CO2, it's releasing oxygen, but there's nothing carrying that oxygen away. Now gases will always diffuse from uh, areas of higher density or higher concentration to lower concentration, but we don't want to wait for that to happen. It could take a long time. So what we want to do is keep air moving in here so the oxygen is taken from here, it's distributed evenly here, and more CO2 can come in and um, and interact with the crop. So those are two main things we're thinking about with, with airflow. So I'm going to talk now about um, how we have our system set up in here. Okay, so let's take a look at some uh, basic airflow in here. So one thing you often see in greenhouses, well I guess there's two ways you can look at airflow. One is creating chaos and mixing the air, so top and bottom mix and all the sides are all mixed. Or there's the idea of just keeping a good continuous flow of air moving in a stream. So having tried both methods, uh, we've definitely found that keeping air moving in a stream gives us a more even temperature, assuming that's what you want, and that's what we're going to assume right now. Um, so what you'll typically see in a greenhouse, um, which wouldn't apply here because we're in a very narrow space and our shelves are on the outside, in a, in a typical greenhouse you've often got um, lots of space, your tables or benches in the middle, and then space around. So what you would see is, is fans on the sides, blowing air one way, and then blowing air another. And what it does is it creates a circular motion of airflow, which keeps the air moving. Like I said, it's going to reduce your, reduce your disease risk, and it's going to improve crop growth by getting better gas mixture. Obviously, we don't have that option because of the way things are laid out here, and our shelves are on the outside. They're very tall. So our goal here is to keep a very even distribution of temperature. And so what we've, we're doing is we're moving the air this way. This way, along the floor, and then back up along the ceiling. So the way we do that is obviously very simple. We've got two fans on the floor here, which always stay on the floor. We don't lift them up and put them on the benches. Uh, we don't do anything like that. That's an obvious uh, hygiene risk. So these stay on the floor. If we need to move them, we can literally push them over with our feet. So that fan blows straight. This fan here blows straight, it's just up a little bit, lifts the air a little bit this way. As we get up into the top part here, we've got a fan, we've got a blower fan up here, which is pushing air this way. We've got another one in the middle here, further pushing air this way. And then one at the end there, which is pointing back this way and downwards. So what we've got is a motion that's coming like this. So, as a general way to test how well our airflow is working, the basic way is to do this. Hmm. So that doesn't work for a number of reasons. Number one, we have a heater right here. And you wouldn't typically have your heaters up high, but that's what works here. 
and two, you can only sense so much with your hands. So what we have is we have in the middle of our greenhouse here, we've got a weather station which measures temperature at this point, and we have our thermostat up in the corner there. So the way we tell how good our airflow is, is by how well those two um, devices are synchronized to each other. And if my thermostat, thermostat is set to 24 degrees, and uh, it's reading 24 degrees, I want to read 24 degrees here as well. So when we were doing another method of airflow, and what we had was, was a number of fans up top pointing upwards, blowing the air down, which did bring heat down, but didn't mix the air very well. We had about a two to three degree difference between those two devices. Now with this new system, with the air coming this way and back up, most of the time they're spot on or they're within a degree or half a degree off. So it's very, very close. And even in the time now where I've turned this, these fans off and the blower up there, um, the degree difference is about three or four degrees. So let's take a look. Right now we're reading 20.2 there. We're reading 24 up there, so we're off by 4 degrees just from turning these fans off. They've been off for about 15 or 20 minutes. In all fairness, the door is open behind us as well. So it's a very simple system. Air is flowing in a circular motion. These fans are straight and pointing up a little. That one's straight and across, and the one at the end is pointing down a little. So we're just trying to create that motion. Once the air is in motion, it's really easy to keep it in motion. We're not in here a lot, because if I'm in here, it's going to block the air a little bit. We've got a dehumidifier I'll pull out that blocks the air a little bit. But in general, our, our measure, our indicator of good air distribution is our temperature um, uh, uh, on our two devices and crop growth, obviously. So I'm just going to show you a quick... Um, I'm going to quickly show you just the fans up there so you can get a good sense of the airflow, and I'll turn things on here and you can see how things work. Okay, so here our fans are going there. You can probably tell it's a little bit louder than uh, we were before. So air is going to follow this path down here into this fan here, move its way. So up here is our blower. This is something you might typically use if your basement's been flooded and you need to dry things up pretty quick. So it's pretty high velocity. It moves the fan pretty fast, the air pretty fast. Air moves up this way as we talked about. Skews the lights. We've got another fan here, just sort of about the midway point, and then it works its way down over here to this fan, which is actually pointing down. And I can feel that fan blowing right on my face right now. And I can feel the air being very warm here as well. So I can see it feel that it's blowing that warm air down. So it's a very simple system. We've only got uh, five fans in here. We could probably do with a few more, but um, that's, uh, that's sufficient for us. So I'm going to take a look at two more things here. We're going to take a look at our ventilator fan there. And we're going to take a look at a few fans we've got in the crops. And we'll talk about a few other concepts here. Okay, so if you think about, uh, we've talked about airflow, um, but one of the things with the greenhouse or any sort of building, uh, especially in the, the colder seasons, is the insulation value or how well it's sealed. So we're in a greenhouse here that has uh, twin wall polycarbonate on the inside and the layer of poly on the outside. Same thing on the top. The walls are pretty well sealed. In our, um, can't really see that, I'll show you in a bit. We've got some soffits here that have some openings, but they're stuffed with insulation. Because we want to do everything we can to maintain whatever heat is in here, um, so it costs less energy to heat. We're in Vancouver, British Columbia, which is in the Pacific Northwest. This is a very moderate, almost Mediterranean type of climate, obviously a little colder in the winter. Um, it's early February right now. It's about 10 degrees Celsius, but we'll get down to minus five. Uh, at night at cold times and you know sometimes we've only got about five degrees in the day so it's cold enough that we're obviously not growing stuff without any supplementary heat but not so cold that um, you're getting frostbite like you might in other parts of the world so that's going to be part of the design of your system um, but it's also going to determine how much insulation you've got so we're insulated with just uh, I think about an R12 uh, and we're fairly well sealed but we've got lots of little gaps in our, in our greenhouse. And to be honest, it's kind of intentional. Because one of the things, when, when we close things up, it, it, it insulates really well, but then there's no fresh air. So the, the risk of that is um, you're, you're not gonna get enough, actually, CO2 coming in here to, to get good plant growth. And if you're using a, a gas uh, heating source, such as propane or natural gas, 
that will quickly use up the oxygen in this space. And once you um, use up the oxygen, your combustion uh, becomes um, incomplete. And so instead of getting more carbon dioxide, you're getting more carbon monoxide. Uh, that is toxic to plants just as it is to humans. So you want to have good airflow. So what we're doing besides the, the airflow I showed you is we've got a ventilator fan that comes on at regular intervals and just basically is blowing air out. That creates a pressure differential and that's going to draw air in. And all our little joints here just have a little bit of space. A little bit of space in these. Our sockets have a little bit of space. And down at the end we have some space as well. So it's going to draw fresh air in. Um, our, we're currently set to come on for about five minutes every hour or so. And with that, we might lose 0.1 or 0.2 of a degree Celsius in temperature. So even in cold weather, um, bringing that fresh air in isn't going to make a big difference in our temperature. That little bit of drop isn't, isn't a big deal. So that's really important. In the summertime, that fan is on all the time because you want to use it to bring in cool air. And what we'll often do is open up the end of the container and try to bring air through this uh, container as much as we can. Um, so in the winter, it's more about keeping the air fresh. And in the summer, it's more about keeping the air cool. So you need some sort of uh, system to bring in fresh air. And if we needed to bring in more or we wanted to cool it down, we'd probably have vents in our lower parts here. And especially in summer, the, cool, the air is going to be a little cooler down below. And we want to bring that up. And in our case, we have a building on this side, so this is really shady over here, whereas this is south and sunny. If I'm going to put in vents, I'm probably going to put them down here on that end, so it's going to draw a cooler air in and bring that up. So that's some strategies we can use to bring the temperature down in here. It's very, very hot in, in full sun, so uh, while in winter we're trying really hard to heat, in the summer we're trying really hard to cool. So yes, you want to make sure, besides having good airflow, that you've got good fresh air coming in and um, we're just using a basic uh, attic fan. Right now it's on a timer. In the summer it's set by temperature. So as soon as it gets to a certain temperature, it comes on. And we don't have that set to the maximum temperature we want it to get. We have it set below that. Because even with that fan on, it can continue to heat up in here. So if I, if I only wanted to get to say, uh, you know, 30 degrees Celsius in here, that's my maximum temperature. That's coming on at about 25. So those are things you'll play with. If you're in a really, really cold environment and you've got to bring air, take air, air out and bring air in, you're going to need a heat exchanger. Otherwise, the, uh, the cold air coming in is going to cool the greenhouse too much. So these are, especially if you're using gas heat. If you're using electric heat, that may not be an issue or hot water heat down below. But um, if you need to bring air in and it's super cold, you've got to make sure it's not bringing your temperature down too much. Okay, now let's take a look at one other thing here. So this is our above crop airflow. Now you see I've got a fan right here. I'm just going to come on over here. You see I've got another one down there. So if I had these on every shelf, actually it would be an advantage where it would create better airflow above the crop for sure and would definitely create um, a microclimate that was more favorable to growth. As it is, I think we've got good enough uh, growth in here and I'm not too, too worried about that airflow. So what we're doing in this case is, um, first of all, the crop you're looking at is radish. And the only place we use this fan system is on the radish. So one of the reasons, well, the reason we're doing it is radish is a crop that really, really holds moisture. So even if you're, you've got a spinner or you're cutting it and drying it in some way um, with a fan, it, it really holds that moisture. So for us, when we cut and package um, our radish, we want to make sure it's really, really dry before it goes into the package. That's basically a storability and a transport issue. It transports better and stores better when it's dry. So for us, spinning it dry doesn't really work very well. So we basically want to cut it dry and package it right away. So you can see these fans aren't on right now because we're a couple days away from harvest. Uh, we harvest on Tuesday, so Monday about midday, these fans are going to come on. And actually, we're going to use another fan just like this, um, oscillating fan, that's going to be on the side here facing towards the crop. And basically, we're just going to have air blowing on this crop all the time in its last, you know, three quarters of a day of growth. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to dry the surface of the leaves and it's going to dry the stems as well. So when we go to package, we're cutting a dry crop. We're, we're uh, just cutting it into a large bin and then we're packaging right from there. So you can do that with any crop. But most crops take really, really well to, to a spinner. 
They, 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 well, you can spin them several times and they'll dry. The radish we find that doesn't work. So once again, we're using uh, increased airflow here to improve our crop quality. It's also making our packaging more efficient and giving us better storability on this crop. So one of the tricks with the radish is that uh, probably the only thing you need to keep in mind is you don't want to have too much air on there and for too long because what that's going to do is it's going to start drying out your soil uh, and that's going to cause your crop to wilt. So you, that takes some tweaking. We're still trying to figure out exactly how we want it, but uh, we seem to have it pretty good just after a few tries. So we've talked about three aspects of airflow that you need to consider in your, in your system. One is having a good airflow within the system in order to have a good even distribution of heat. And that airflow is also making sure you've got good air circulation above your crops so you don't get a little bit of a microclimate here and get poor gas exchange. Number two was bringing in fresh air through using a ventilator fan and possibly some vents within your system. The key thing there to remember is uh, the temperature change that may create. So um, take that into consideration with, your whatever, with whatever climate you're in. And then the third thing we looked at was using a, was looking uh, at airflow and using that good airflow over top of the crop before harvest to dry that crop out so we can cut it, uh, cut it dry and package it right away. So there's other things we could talk about with airflow, but I think those are three key things that we've learned. Uh, so I hopefully uh, you find those useful in your system. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching.